us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy begotten Son. Lord God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness, to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Everybody, please be seated, unless we have any first graders, kindergartners, preschoolers who are with us. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the letter, St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, 
Then sudden disasters come upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then, the one who received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is, back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everybody. Today, in our Gospel, we are presented with three investors. And they were also servants, and the master had entrusted each one with a certain amount of currency. And uh, they were to be stewards and investors of this, uh, of what they had been entrusted with. Two of them doubled it, doubled what the master gave them, and they are applauded for that. And the third one is called useless, because he simply takes what he had been entrusted with and buries it in the ground for fear that he might lose it. And I got to thinking and praying about that and I, the question that kind of came to me was, can Jesus trust us? Can Jesus trust us? You know, he has been so good to us and is so good to us and entrusts so much to our care um, and he expects that we will be good stewards, but not just take care of it, but double it, quadruple it, uh, back for his sake. Uh, fortunately, we have very many wonderful examples in our church of, we call them the saints. You know, every day we have about 30 different saints that we remember and celebrate. Uh, we remember very common ones that would come to the tips of our tongues when somebody said, name some saints. But there are other ones, too. Um, we've had some really powerful ones in the past week. We had Mother Frances Xavier Cabrini on Friday, and she was the first United States citizen to be canonized. That woman created 67 orphanages, schools, and hospitals in the course of her life for the sake of souls. God had entrusted her with what she didn't think was enough to get any of that going, but she returned it and she doubled it and quadrupled it and even more. Uh, we had the feast day in the past week of St. Benignus. St. Benignus was baptized in the fourth century by St. Patrick and Benignus became the Bishop of Ireland following St. Patrick and he built uh, an incredible uh, church uh, several incredible churches over there, but more importantly, uh, was just just like spent himself tirelessly for the sake of the people of Ireland. And the church is much enriched because of that. He didn't just, he wasn't just a good steward of what he had been given. He took good care of what he had been given, but then he multiplied it um, for the sake of the kingdom. We had St. Jehoshaphat on Thursday. Jehoshaphat was called the thief of souls because everywhere he went, he stole people, he stole souls for Jesus. And he didn't just take care of his own soul, he multiplied the souls that he brought to Jesus to heaven. And I was just kind of thinking like, can Jesus trust us to be good stewards of all of the blessings that we've been given? I think about the fact that, you know, it's easy for us to think about that, like, with money and uh, stuff, right? Like, we donate, we tithe, we give to the bishop's appeal, more about that in a second, but we do all these things, which is great. Like, we're taking, we're, we're good stewards of our money and we're giving it to where it needs to go. But what about, are we like good stewards of our baptismal graces? Like when we were incorporated into the mystical body of Jesus, the church. Our first reading today is about this beautiful, amazing woman. And it's a symbol. This is a symbol of the church. It's, the scripture says she reaches out her hands to the poor 
and extends her arms to the needy. She is beautiful. Her reward uh, she has uh, for there's a great reward for her labors, and it talks about her works and the praises, and it's all this like this beautiful image of the bride of Christ, which is the church. We call the church the bride of Christ and also the body of Christ. But that's because husband and wife become one, and so both are appropriate. But the the church exists to continue Christ. The, the incarnation continues in and through the mystical body of Christ, his bride, the Catholic Church. And that's why we do all that we do. And, uh, but we're incorporated into that by our baptism. And our confirmation, we receive the fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that, like, holy smokes. And at Mass, we receive the body and blood of Jesus. And, like, I think the question is, are we good stewards of all of that? Like, do we let the graces, pray God, we don't let the graces go to waste. And that we live like, the bishop really kind of moved me on Thursday. I was there for confirmation. And at the cathedral, I was sponsoring somebody. And he said, you know, the, the first 12 the apostles were a bunch of cowards. They were afraid of their own shadows. They locked themselves in the upper room and they were terrified until the Holy Spirit came and flooded them and then all of the sudden they went to all 12 different corners of the world and began the church. And this church wouldn't even be standing had they not done that. But like they became, at first they were lousy stewards of the graces they'd been given, but then they become good stewards and with courage and with faith and with love to move mountains and with all of the virtues and all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, they, they were unstoppable. And like they were good stewards of what God had entrusted them with. And they didn't just take it, they doubled it, they multiplied it all. Can Jesus trust us? I have this memory of when I was in high school, my priest, Father Charlie, he had us all, I think he was preaching about this very gospel. And he said, everybody, close your eyes. He said, imagine that you're the only one in the church. And it's, it's just you. And then Jesus sits down right next to you and looks you in the eye and says, what have you done with the gifts that I have given you? And that convicted me, I remember, even as a high school young man, like, that convicted me that Jesus doesn't just give us material stuff or spiritual stuff, graces for nothing, that we are meant to use it all and to multiply it and to bring truckloads of souls with us to heaven when we go. Um, we get to be a part of the Catholic Church, which is in the business of doing all these sorts of things. Uh, we are, get to be a part of this great action of grace uh, that is so much bigger than we are. And that's pretty exciting. Um, it is time for the annual bishop's appeal, and you notice in your uh, pews there are envelopes and things. Perhaps you already got one in the mail. Um, feel free to fill it out and put it in the collection basket, or bring it back next week and put it in the collection basket next week, or take it home and mail it, whatever you want to do. But the cool thing is, is that we get to be a part of this great action of grace that, that is the church. The mystical body of Jesus with her arms extended the, and the bride of Christ as our first dream, arms extended doing these works of charity and salvation of souls. And that's pretty exciting. The Bishop's Appeal does three big things. Number one, it, the works of charity done by the diocese. Number two, formation of future priests like Tyler and Jose. And number three, the formation of, uh, of souls. Uh, in faith formation programs, youth groups, Catholic schools around the diocese. Uh, All of these things are bigger than what we could do by ourselves. We're not big enough as a parish to have a seminary here. 
<laughs> and they probably wouldn't let me be the rector anyway. Uh, and it, but we're not big enough for that. We're not big enough to have homeless shelters and things that our diocese as a bigger thing is able to do. Now we're able to do a lot on a local level, which we do do a lot on a local level, praise the Lord. But there's things that, that the diocese as a larger body does on, with, in cooperation with all of us 139 Catholic parishes in this diocese. There are five dioceses, of course, in the state of Indiana, 139 parishes in our one diocese of the archdiocese. And so we get to be a part of it, and I just would, would let you know that, um, that it makes a big difference. And so please um, contribute as you are able to do so. Uh, it's part of being a good steward. Uh, of our material things and also our spiritual blessings that we have. I'll just end with my annual joke about the Bishop's Appeal. Uh, you know the two guys that were on vacation and their boat, they were on the water and their boat kind of falls apart and they're thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Thank God there was an island really close by. But it was in the middle of nowhere in the ocean and like the one guy is freaking out and he's like, we're going to die, we're going to die, what are we going to do, we're going to die, there's nobody around here, there's no food, we're not, and the other guy's just totally chill, you know, and he says, my friend, every year I donate a million dollars to the bishop's appeal, and it's about time for the bishop's appeal, the bishop will find us, <laughs> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For the church, that we may be aware of the gifts of faith, time, and opportunity that God has entrusted to us, be good stewards of these gifts, and diligently utilize them in the service of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That efforts may be made among all leaders to heal our nation, establish dialogue, reconcile disagreements, and find a common ground to work together and increase peace between all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that God will welcome them into the light and joy of his presence forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are combating the coronavirus, that God will bring healing to the sick, strength to their caregivers, and wisdom to those researching cures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will help us to respect and defend the value of life from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are discerning God's call in their life, that they may recognize the promptings of the Spirit and be open to how they can best love and serve God and His people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for all of us gathered together this morning, that we may be strengthened in faith, hope, and love as we gather to worship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
we pray for Don Winkler, who we remember during this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers that we hold within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we place things in all our prayers before you. In your love and in your mercy, we ask that you ask through Christ our Lord. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you, and gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of you. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord.
upstairs. Thank you. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery. Humbly imploring the Lord that what your Son commanded us to do in the memory of Him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, God bless all of you. Uh, after Mass, everybody is welcome to go into the gym. They have our online reverse travel on yesterday. And the bids for the various baskets of goodies and and things and experiences and so forth are all going to be open until November 30th. So you can go check all that out over there in a distance kind of fashion into in the gym of the school. And uh, take a look, see if you can make your bids online. There's some information there. It's super easy uh, how to do that. Uh, I would like to invite anybody who would like to join us for a brief rededication and blessing of the memorial of the I didn't take your